Hey, you're gorgeous. Welcome back to the blog number three, Insights Tips, following my journey on the creation of my first book, Be More Wolf, to help women thrive regarding of the circumstances that they find themselves in. If you are a solopreneur, author, coach, speaker, leader, and you find that you're getting in your own way, You've tried lots of different things, but nothing sticking. You're not able to get past a certain point in your business or in your profession that you would like. Be More Wolf is absolutely 100% dedicated to you and to help you get out of your own way. This is my weekly series, and it's following me on the journey of writing my first book and blimey what a journey it is I have to say (laughs) so I thought I would share my insight with you on this this process so we can connect on another level and you can find out what it is that I've been up to plus I thought that you know the bonus training the extra training the insight that isn't necessarily going to go into the book but is still valuable because I'm heading, I'm looking for about 50,000, 60,000 words. So not everything is going to go in, but some of it is still valuable content. So what I want to share with you, first of all, is the business side. Because I know there's a lot of women in my network who are still interested in the business, even though what I'm doing now is more focusing on personal performance. So I wanted to firstly talk about the perspective of creating a business book. Here's what I would say first off, and that is that it's really important to work backwards. So you want to, when you're creating the business book, have your programs, offers, services firmly set into the business. So what you can do then is you can then seed throughout the book that you have these offers available if people want to learn more. Now, these offers need to be established. They need to be credible. You need to have clients that have already enrolled into them. I personally wouldn't recommend writing a book when you're not established or you don't have a program that you've taken clients through that you know works and gets people's results. That's just my personal preference. Of course, a book is really good for establishing your credibility. It's really good for building your authority and helping you to stand out against your competitors. I just know how much marketing goes into selling a product or a service. So for me personally, I would always recommend having your foundational cornerstones in the business first. So the book I'm creating, Be More Wolf, is to help women regardless of the circumstances they find themselves in. So the Conscious Coaching Reflective Toolbox, I've already created, it already sells, I know it works, I know it gets results, I do it myself on a daily basis. So I can see that throughout the book. And that program, that service, that offer, is actually going to be the cornerstones within the book. So I've already got a lot of content already created, which is completely awesome. So as I said, work backwards. Seed your offers throughout the book. Of course, you want to put absolutely your best work into the book, your best foot forward. Do not hold anything back. And you want to think about what it is that you want to be known for. Not just about what, why you're writing the book, but what do you want to know, be known for? What context does that have with your audience, with the book? So it's about making sure that your personal story, what it is that you want to be known for, is beautifully aligned in the book as well. You don't want a book that's all over the place and doesn't have context for really positioning you well. Seeding into the books, you want to be known for what's your story, how you're going to incorporate stories into the book as well. Not only stories, 
And another reason why I say it's so important that you want to have sold what it is that you're basing the book around is that you're going to want to have testimonials and stories from your clients also within the book as well to back up your level of expertise. So creating the book, creating a business book, have your foundation in place first. Work backwards and think about how you can seed the different offers it is you have that are relevant to the context of, of the book. So you don't want offers that are, are not aligned and don't match with one another. You want to have offers that are clear, succinct, match with the book perfectly, not going and taking somebody else off on a completely different tangent. So that's the first thing I wanted to talk to you about. So that's what I've been exploring this week. Oh, yes. The next thing I wanted to talk about was, okay, so I've started creating my book, Be More Wolf, for empowering, to, empowering women to thrive regardless of circumstances. And I've given myself 10 months to create the book. So what I'm doing over those 10 months, and this video blog is one way of doing that, is I'm building my community as I go along. And what I've done is I've created a lead magnet based around the book. So people who sign in to the lead magnet, they will get a free digital copy of the book. So I'm already building that audience before it's created, which is going to be helpful because that's going to help me leverage testimonials. When people have read the book, I can have a bank of testimonials to refer to relevant to the book. So lead magnets, what are they? <laughs> well, <laughs> a lead magnet is a simple and easy way to build an email list. So an email list of potential clients who are interested in what it is that you have to say. So you build your relationship through your email list by sending regular emails so people know exactly who you are, what it is that you're about, what offers you have coming up. Now, the reason why lead magnets is so important now is that because of everything that's been going on with social media over the last six months or so, you cannot run the risk of just depending on social media. Sorry, that's probably a cocktail that's being blended if you can hear a noise in the background. <laughs> I'm not at home. <laughs> my my favourite spot. <laughs> but I wanted to get this video out today, so here you go. No noise and all. Perfect. There's no such thing as perfect in my world. It is what it is. Don't wait for perfect moments. Not <laughs> anyway, where was I? Where was I? Yeah, I was saying about lead magnets. It is really important now that you are actively building your email list in the business because if any of the social media platforms go down, if you are blocked from an account, which we are seeing time and time, look at Twitter, look at Facebook and how they, and YouTube even, are blocking people's accounts, taking them down because they don't have the same political agenda as them. You cannot risk that happening to your business. So it's a lead magnet is a really great way to build your, to build your list. Sorry, I know I've got a lot of reflection on my glasses. To build your list, to bring people into your world consistently. Really, really important. So the book I'm using to create a list of women who are going to be interested in learning more about getting out of their own way. I'm going to have to put them back on because I can't, I can't see a thing without them. <laughs> So the book helps the list, the um, lead magnet, which is used to build the list, is going to start to build community. It means that people can get a free digital copy of the book, which is great because this book is designed for people in all circumstances, on all budgets. Bonus, people can get hold of bonus training, follow me on the journey. And how, as I, said, I think I said, how the lead magnet works, someone signs in for it, they then get emails, you can build a relationship with, with them, you can make offers at different points. 
So it's really about nurturing that relationship with the people who are in your email marketing. It is absolutely critical now. If you are not building a list, you absolutely, hands on heart, more so now, more than ever, have to absolutely 100% build a email list and keep a backup of that email list as well. Okay, on it, on it. <laughs> you with me good <laughs> let me know have you ever had a social media account blocked stopped you know you've lost your community because whoever is controlling the social media have decided that because you don't have the same political agenda that they're gonna close your account have you ever experienced that have you lost a list Really important questions for online digital businesses is about how we protect ourselves as entrepreneurs from these big giants that have unfortunately monopolized how the online world works. It's really important that you do some risk management around that. Okay, what else have I been focused on? <laughs> I have this week. So how I decided to write initially for the book was to write based on experiences. So when something comes to mind and i am got a really good emotional connection so it, it makes sense to me, it has context, then I will write. What I didn't want to do is to push myself into a situation where I was writing for the sake of writing because that to me doesn't have the right energy, the... It feels a bit, it feels heavy, so I decided for this book to write, of course I'm going to have to do the research, but to write when I feel energetically aligned to what it is that I want to share. So I'm doing that through article writing. So an article, it normally takes me about two hours to create an article. I will then share that on my social media. I will also an article into on my website i will also send that out as a newsletter as well and then i will add it to the bank of articles i already have that i can pull information from for the book so one of the articles i wrote was i just want to pop over to my website a second one of the articles I wrote was how to easily stop, how easy is it to, to stop self-sabotaging yourself? And I talk about it being a, a double-edged sword. Because, oh, I'm shaking my camera. That's not very helpful. <laughs> okay. Where's it gone? Why can I not get that? Oh, that's why. It's, you know, um, how easy is it to stop self-sabotaging yourself? It really is a double-edged sword. On some respects, it's very easy. And then on another, actually, it can be quite challenging. But the secret to this is really about making a decision to take action to challenge what it is that is playing out so let me just see what i've written here so in a nutshell in a nutshell she says okay how easy is it to create a new reality i speak about i've also spoken about my awakening how i've how i woke up how i became awake awake how i started to change my life and to create a different reality for myself okay so what i've got here is how's how easy to how easy is it to create a new reality it's a double-edged sword sword in some respects it is easy and in other ways it's not Yes, you can wake up and make decisions more consciously, but you need the skills, knowledge and insight to be able to navigate and manage a new way of thinking for it to stick. 
that's the thing. It's the knowledge, the skills, and the insight to, while you're making conscious decisions, but it's having that insight to actually stick with it and to make it stick. And that's what we want, is we want to be making decisions that stick and have the capacity, capability, capacity, I'm not sure either of those are the right words, for us to actually create a new reality for ourselves. So it requires conscious action, conscious action taking and exploring why you think and believe the way you do, to be able to get out of your own way. You can't just say, I want to change something about myself and expect miracles to happen. You have to dig deep and explore why you think the way you do to be able to set yourself free and create a new reality to play in. Your brain is like a computer game. You can build a wall to keep things out, but if you don't have strong enough foundations, the wall is going to fall down and you are back to square one. I go into a lot more detail in the article, but this is how I'm starting to create articles for the book, content for the book. So while I was feeling that emotionally and energetically, and it felt good to write about, I just wrote about it because it just made complete sense to me. I also wrote about 32 um, key benefits to the conscious coaching reflective toolbox now that probably to be honest that isn't going to go in the book that was just me having a complete brain dump about all the benefits that i have personally experienced since being on this self-discovery journey since creating the conscious coaching toolbox what have the benefits been for me personally so i just i'm really good with my dyslexic brain i'm really good at just doing once I start, I can start doing lists very, very quickly. So two articles that I have created, which are in complete alignment with the book, which I can then take content from and use within the book. But also I can use it to share on social media, to share on my website, to create videos from. So at the same time of writing the book, I'm also marketing the book and the offer consistently to really raise the vibration of it, to really let people know what it is that I am doing, what it is that I want to help people with. So I'm not waiting 10 months to then go, I've written a book. <laughs> what I want to do is start building the community now, building the love now. <laughs> Hence the reason for these uh, video blogs, build the love, and hopefully help you not help, well, yeah, maybe, yeah, because the whole idea of the book is to help people, of course, get out of their own way, but bring some insight into how I navigate my business, how I navigate my mindset on a daily basis to, to keep myself in check. The last thing I wanted to uh, talk to you about, and this is a new one, this is an interesting one. So we talk about in the book, Be More Wolf, about stepping into a higher and a better version of yourself. So in this moment, as I'm doing this video, in the here and now, I've got all of the past not all of it because I've cleared a lot of it, but I've got a lot of um, a lot of negative self-talk, a lot of limiting beliefs that play out, a lot of what ifs, you know, what if this, what if that, what if, you know, <laughs> the, the film's fuzzy, what if there's too much noise, what if people don't watch this, what if people don't want to buy the book. I have all of that playing out in my head. So... In the here and now, those are some of the things that are happening in my mind, in my mindset. So where within the conscious coaching reflective toolbox, I talk about stepping into a much cleaner, higher version of yourself. Now, for me personally, there are several aspects to that. One is about be more wolf, which I'll talk more about at another time, but that's much more about leadership, stepping out, leading. 
The other thing I talk about is embracing the divine feminine. It is about connecting to the divine feminine to create a better, more aligned version of myself. The woman who really, really thrives and who is able to get out of her own way. So one of the tools I use to do that is a deck of tarot cards. And these tarot cards, I can't remember the, the name of them for the life of me, but they are based on the divine feminine. There are 53 cards, all are significantly different. And what I do is I pull one card a day, uh, then I research that card, I have a look to see what her qualities are, and then I journal around her qualities to really understand her, to understand how to connect with her, how to look at my own qualities and think about how can I embrace being more divinely feminine. It is a fantastic thing to do. It's a real eye-opener. Sometimes it can be a little bit challenging, but I found this is a really, really great way to step step beyond who you are in this current moment and it really helps in terms of an educational piece in terms of that research piece finding out more about the divine feminine and how i can use that in the business and interestingly enough one of the cards that fell out of the pack the very first one that fell out of the pack it was a woman who was holding um heads and I thought oh no <laughs> have I done the right thing here and it was quite powerful she basically her skill was to really let go of anything that wasn't serving her so I can then journal on anything that isn't serving me and let it go and step into and embrace her qualities more so whenever I've got that self-doubt playing out you know the um what if this what if that oh i'm not sure about that people aren't going to go for that oh it's too expensive all of that bullshit that comes into my reality my thoughts i can take a step back and have a look at her and think about okay how would she deal with this how would she deal with what is going on what is playing out in my head so she's saying let go of anything that doesn't serve you well none of that serves me not one single bit of it serves me so i can just drop it i can let it go of course i have to work on it consciously and i have to clear it in different ways but this is a really great way to journal on stepping into another reality stepping into another perspective and another way of seeing things. Admittedly, yes, this is a little bit woo-woo, for sure, but woo-woo is good. <laughs> I just think of it as acting. You know, if you, um, if you were learning a script, you would be standing in a different character. This is all this is. It's, it's helping you to step into a space that you want to embrace moving forward, a space where you want to feel more comfortable. You want to feel more aligned you want to be a better version of yourself not saying that there's anything wrong with me <laughs> she's just trying to convince herself but you know when you want to get out of your own own way step beyond the bs that is playing out in your head step beyond the trauma the conditioning the whatever it is that is is playing out in your reality is this is a fantastic way to move beyond what you see now and to create a completely different perspective on the way that you can see things and yeah as i said some of it is a bit challenging i pulled one card the other day and i was like oh have i, really, have I got to really do that <laughs> about a tremendous amount of resistance but i was like actually yes you do have to do this because this is what you want more 
of but the whole fear resistance started to uh, started to play out big time so the tarot cards can act as a really great um, I'm trying, I've got the word, I've got the image in my head, but I can't, compass, that's what I was going to say. They can act as a really great compass. They can act as a really great tool for helping you just to focus on something different to think about. So I really, really recommend this. It's really, really helped me think about, you know, what does defined feminine mean? What does it mean to me? What does it mean to other women? How do I need to embrace it? How can I use it to lead better? How can I use it to write the book from a more aligned place, which is ultimately what I want, the more aligned I am, the more helpful it's going to be for the women I want to serve moving forward. So what else have I got here? Yeah, so do you have any prompts that you use in your for you to step out of yourself, step outside of yourself, help you make better decisions, help you clear your mind, you know, if you've got stinking thinking, negative thinking playing out, how do you navigate what's going on? Let me know in the comments box below. I would love to know what strategies, what tools you use. And I will see if I can find a link and pop. So more people having cocktails. I dare them. <laughs> I think I'm joking or not. I'm going to have to have a beer now and join them. <laughs> yeah, let, let me know, gorgeous. Until next week, vlog number four. Ooh, the good thing about these um, v blogs is that they keep you on track. You have to do work, so it's a great way to hold yourself accountable. Till next time, beautiful. Take care.